this current uh, crisis that we have, the geopolitical crisis with a waging war and a possible, uh, you know, spark in, in Asia, I'm referring to the Taiwan, China situation mm -hmm. as well with the US. So, you know, the, basically the geopolitical situation is delicate, yeah. right? So how do you uh, actually see uh, the energy transition with that? Are we going to revert back to uh, the, the known sources like you, the, you already mentioned, coal is again, you know, the, being used as an energy source, even in Europe. Uh, but, but what's your opinion on that? John, I think uh, that's actually chapter, chapter one and two of the book. Yeah, in the in the context of how markets operate. Yeah, so let me just uh, let me sh just start describing how we got into into the situation where we are, which is a complete reversal uh, of what happened in 20, uh, 2020 and twenty twenty one. Yeah, so 20, 2020, 2021, you had the lockdown. Yeah, and if you are familiar with how the energy market works especially the power sector works, yeah? The prices are being, are being set by the, uh, by the marginal uh, supply. So in this case, the marginal supply tends to be gas, or in some cases would tend to be coal. Yeah? Now, so if the volume would go down, then also the first uh, capacity that you take out of the system would be the marginal supplies, which would be coal or gas. Yeah. Now, so what happened in 2020 and 2021? Yeah. Well, not only was volume going down, you have a lot of rain, you have a lot of wind, yeah. And between the two, uh, it basically helps to have a very good level of production from nuclear. Yeah and very good production from hydro and very good production from wind. So in the case of Spain, 30% of the market was actually supplied by the wind farms. Surprising, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas in some markets, uh, wind could probably only manage about 1% or 5%. Yeah. Now, so with that kind of situation, uh, you end up with coal and coal and gas practically being mothballed, yeah, because nobody wants it. Not because nobody wants coal or gas, but there's just not enough demand for it. Yeah. So fast forward to 2022, we talk about climate change or changing climate or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So you have the Russians wanting to uh, invade uh, or have a special operations rather in a in a country called, uh, in their neighbor called Ukraine. Yeah. Of course, everybody seems to retaliate against them. So the focus was on the curtailment or the cutback in gas supplies. Yeah. Now, if you cut back gas supplies at the same time, you're suffering from drought. Yeah. Where the rivers are drying up, wind is not blowing as much as they, as they used to. So you've eliminated the hydro, you've eliminated the wind, you've also eliminated the gas. And where does nuclear stand in all of this? Well, the, the river or the water from the river in France was too hot to cool down the nuclear power plants. Then nuclear is not producing as much as well. In fact, it's producing about half of the, of the volume that uh, it was producing. So supply squeeze, not only on gas, but also on the other sources of energy, leaves you with only one available source, which is coal, yeah? Now, so all of that is actually economics and there's no new paradigm involved in this, but it's really doing the sums, doing the numbers and understanding how the system works, yeah? To understand where we are. So that's why I'm, uh, probably making a rather bold forecast here, that this is not something that, uh, this is not something that would persist for a very long time. You're probably going to see this for the next, uh, the next few months, 
But as the rainfall uh, starts to normalize or starts to go back to a more normal level, yeah, and the wind flow would uh, would normalize, then you have cool cooling water available for nuclear. Then the more probable scenario is that power prices will start to fall, energy prices will start to fall, and if you believe in a recession. Yeah, demand will start to fall. And if nobody wants your product, you can price it for as much as you want. If nobody's buying it, you're, you're bound to, to reduce the prices. Yeah. So the lessons from all of this is that any energy transition is not a linear process. It is going to be recursive, tentative, and the implication of that is the pendulum would go back and forth. Yeah. So as they say, you know, a swallow doesn't signal that the spring is coming from a harsh, after a harsh winter. Well, in the same way that a drought and a hot summer doesn't simply mean that, you know, everything that has to do with decarbonization can be thrown off, off the shelf and say, okay, we're now back to a, uh, the, the brave old world as we knew it. <laughs>